Yeah, it's still didn't go inside. Okay. You know, we don't like to come on Friday because there's problems. Yep. You don't want to do it on Monday because everybody. Yep. No, I, I get that at work too because I Wednesday. I look at my aerials. I'm like, okay, I can see the manhole. I can see the manhole. Is what it is. It's a self that went out. Send my crew out there. I need it dug here to here. I know it's roughly at this point. Yeah, they dig in there. Like, we can't find it. Double check like, Dude, it's 30 inches deep. It, 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 how do you miss it? Dig, dig, dig. Can't find it. Mm. Well, yes. I hurt my yeah. back. I was but they, you know, they can't, still, uh, can't find it. One place. Like, dig and dig and like, You know how that works with IEPs and run all of that. I got a tracing that, that run down through the back and we won for it. Shot me. Mm -hmm. Way over here somewhere. I'm like, I said, I can't sit here. Out of the box so here. Down, like, into the box there. But it ends today? Up. Yep. I'm not 100%. <sighs> well, I'm not feeling like I'm a little shocked as I sit, so. Guess that's a plus, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I talked to her. I was going to say <laughs> that area, you should be pushing. <laughs> Lots of community. You're lucky. Yeah. You're right. I think we got eight in front of our house. You're lucky. No, we ours I think was eight. <clears throat> Damn, it's those on it. Both shoulders. Bring my bone. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know why Tesla shows up, but that's just me. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe. Right. I remember his name. Yeah. Drawing a blank. Yeah. So, Six oh one. Right. right. <clears throat> All their equipment's already here. Just a lot of times, that the mobilization aspect is what kills you, getting everything in. Yeah. Good. Right. Yep. Good evening. We'll have our call to order, followed by Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Here. Ms. Persino? Here. Mr. Rufner? Here. Ms. Stemper? Here. All right, changes tonight's agenda. Do we have anything? All right, special presentations by staff members or invited consultants. All right, we'll move on to public comments, your agenda items only, limited to three minutes. Rick Curlin, 1009 Wood Glen. I am calling to speak on 2024-10. I see that it was amended, but I, I don't know what the amended was. Do you have a copy of that? Okay. 
That's right, we can't go back and forth. But I can't really, I don't know how, how the public can see that it was amended if it's not amended, if they don't know what it's amended to. But getting back to why I'm against it, uh, it's been tried over the years to allocate more money from the utility funds to the general fund. And everybody's tried it for obvious reasons. They feel that either they don't pay their fair share or that they have too much money. But if I'm not mistaken, a rate study was done which, in which Mr. George and the other supervisors took part of, part in, and they decided on what they needed in each department to run their departments. So what you're doing briefly is taking money from them that they needed or said they needed. And I don't think that's right. If they've got extra money, you ought to give it to the people who pay the bill, the electric bill, the water bill. You're taking it and put it in a general fund. And what's going to be done with it? Well, it really doesn't say in the ordinance what's going to be done with it. So I don't, I don't believe that's fair. And in fact, it has been tried many times, as I said before. And you cannot take money that's allocated for the utilities away from the utilities and put it in a general fund. That's why the general fund is there for things that weren't allocated for the utilities. The utilities, which is different in our, in our charter, is uh, we stand on ourselves. But it always looks like it's a lot of money, but you never know. Does that mean that if he needed more money that you would raise the taxes? It's got to be, it's a, it's a fair question. I just think the people, if you've got that much money, you should go back. I think you're trying to find enough money to do what you want to do. Mayor, time. Okay. Thank you very much. The other thing I'm saying is that your last emergency meeting was a violation of the Opens Meeting Act because you did not have any advertising Thank you, sir. anywhere. Your time's up. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else tonight? All right, we'll move on to reports. Mayor has nothing to report. <coughs> Council? Do you have anything? Yeah, there was a planning and zoning meeting yesterday. I showed up to it, but I could not stay due to, I had injured my back and was very uncomfortable trying to sit for a period of time yesterday. My understanding though is that they did, uh, they were voting on a variance for the distillery, which I believe did not pass. Um, there was also the Commerce Association, they did a presentation uh, about a bulletin board in the Kiwanis Corner, uh, the Four Corner Park. So that's all that I can report on. Uh, that was the utility meeting today, but nothing happened. You know, we just did our thing. Okay. Ms. Jewell? Um, <clears throat> uh, just a few things. I attended the, the Easter egg hunt. Um, it was a great turnout, regardless of the weather. Um, we're looking for some potential uh, people to kind of take over that in the future. Um, we're working on the Eclipse event for Monday. Um, we have lots of vendors coming in and uh, support and that from our local community businesses and people. Um, so come out and attend that. And then um, the fire board meeting was last week. Um, and then we had just like a special meeting or a work session yesterday 
um, and we're going out to find a part-time physical officer um, to, now that we've got everything kind of in check. Um, so we're looking to hire a physical officer. Um, that's all I have. Ms. Brennan, do you have anything? Oh. <clears throat> uh, March 26, we had a Parks and Recs meeting. It was a very well uh, thought out meeting. Um, Mrs. Nicely reported that she's uh, waiting for a few more bids to come in on a replacement swing for the newer playground. Uh, they had talked about um, bench options on where to put them and they were very pleased and happy to be included in the phase of where to possibly place more benches. Um, they talked about options and ideas to try to get more uh, mulch for the playgrounds. Um, they're also going to be including the East River Gardens playgrounds. We also talked about possibly putting in signs because this is needed. Um, I wasn't aware of this, of putting signs up that says, please keep all pets on a leash. Um, they've been having problems on the walkway and in a lot of the playground areas of dogs just roaming free and the owners carrying the leash. And um, I had sent out uh, the email about all that uh, to the interim city manager and I'm looking forward to possibly sitting down with both our city manager and hopefully Ms. Mr. Housley to see if we could work out a way to get those signs made. Um, our next meeting is gonna be May 28th at 6 p.m. Um, in regards to the Shara Sullivan Easter egg hunt, it went very well. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came out in the rain and in the cold. I'd also like to thank everybody who participated, who volunteered, our Newton Falls High School students. And um, next year it's going to be taken over by Tiny Tots. We're hoping. Hopefully. And also, um, k, k Market, they had a wonderful Easter egg event also. Um, I'd like to thank them for putting theirs on. It was wonderful. We had two back-to-back -back Easter egg hunts. Kids had a blast. Um, April 8th, the solar event. It's going to be from 8 to 5. Um, all businesses in town, we are welcome, welcoming all of you to, if you want to put out a vending table, all businesses put out your vending table. Um, I also talked to Mr. Uh, Nemet from k, k Market. They're also planning a wonderful little uh, solar party also down by the park. So we'll have two things going on in town again. So I think that's wonderful. Um, lots of things to do in town on that day too. And tomorrow is the police committee meeting. It's open to the public. If you all wish to attend, you're more than welcome. That's it. Mr. Rupner? Uh, yes, real quick. I did attend the uh, Newton Falls Area Commerce Association meeting last week. Uh, just wanted me to pass a few things that uh, public interest. Country Club, Country Club Rehabilitation will be holding a bingo night starting the third Thursday of every month uh, at their facility. As far as the time, I'm not aware of, but uh, we can find that out. Uh, along with that, April 10th, the Commerce Association, along with Repurposed Materials, will be finally holding their official ribbon cutting ceremony, opening of the new business with the public. I know they've been open for a while, but they've not done an official ribbon cutting or opening with the public. So Commerce Association is going to step in and help with that. There's a new shop up at 34 Broad Street, Woods and Goods. 
Uh, anybody that hasn't been made aware, they did their grand opening on, I believe it was the second. Uh, a lot of wood crafts and wood items like that. Uh, this Friday is the uh, soft opening for the Five Fours Distillery over at 417 North Center. Additionally, uh, April 5th, Friday, is going to be the late night in the fall. So come on out, spend a little bit of time with, uh, with the community, get to interact with the businesses. A lot of the shops are gonna be open up late. So come on in, spend some time, and uh, you know, meet, meet and greet your neighbors, so to say, a little bit. Uh, you've already got the solar eclipse information, so that's all I've got, Mayor. All right, we'll move on to city manager, sir. Yes. So I've um, been working with the maintenance department, getting all the information together for uh, their a replacement dump truck for that department. Uh, you'll be seeing that on the next meeting, the legislation for that. Uh, <clears throat> so we've been working on that. Also worked with uh, the superintendent over there and got the disposal list that you see tonight for getting rid of, uh, to, to dispose of a couple of used um, obsolete piece of equipment, becoming very maintenance heavy. Uh, just deteriorated they're obsolete so we're gonna get dispose of those and auction those off <clears throat> um, got the uh, initiated the field work for the uh, annexation of the state route 5 and 534 uh, properties for the Dunkin Donuts uh, that that's been started Thomas folk and associates are taking care of the uh, field work, getting the property descriptions and everything taken care of, the, the legal description ready, and then that in the next couple of weeks that'll be ready to submit uh, for, for that. On March 15th, uh, the electric department over in their Church Street substation, they had an arrestor piece of, it's a piece of equipment uh, blow up over there in the substation. They uh, were able to get all the electric load switched around to take a lot of the load off of that substation, but the, the part that failed uh, cause, is causing now that substation is only half operational. Uh, this is the one that um, they are working towards getting rebuilt. Um, the parts, the replacement parts are ordered. They will not be in until October. So quite a lead time on that. Um, had a request and researched, referenced a crosswalk on Ridge Road in the area of, uh, right around the where the cemetery is. After talking with uh, Rich Koss, our street department superintendent, we did some researching. In order to put a properly installed crosswalk in, there has to be a sidewalk leading to it from both directions of the sidewalk. So we can't just put a crosswalk randomly anywhere on the road. Even, even though there's a sidewalk on each side of the street, if there's not a sidewalk leading to the road at that point from both directions, it's, just, it's not a proper crosswalk there. Um, you know, and we could paint lines anywhere, but it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be proper. And then if, if, if we were to just paint a crosswalk somewhere randomly on, on five, well, it's 534 Ridge Road, then there could be liability issues with a, a crosswalk that's not, not properly installed there. So just wanted to touch on that. <clears throat> um, for the uh, solar eclipse event there on Monday, Broad Street will be closed from eight to five between Canal and Center Street uh, to allow people to freely move around from business to business without, without the worry of any traffic coming through. Um, we will get the road opened up back up at five o'clock uh, to make sure we've got good traffic flow for any people, bit traffic to flow out of town and, and continue moving. Uh, the last thing, I, the uh, new Military banners for this year have been ordered, so they should be in very soon, and then you'll see those going up. I have a 
Yes, please. Um, Mike, I had given you a <clears throat> folder with stuff for the fundraiser for faces. Are we okay for you just to, like, can I suspend rules and let her talk about it, or do we need to put a motion on? I'm okay. I just, with with the rain yesterday, um, I, I literally didn't get into the office until just for a couple minutes. I was tied up at the wastewater plant. Uh, I just haven't gotten to drafting that okay. that letter yet. So, can I suspend? May I? Yes. May I make a motion to suspend rules just for a couple minutes so that we can have Jessica from Faces come up and explain what I'm talking about? I'll second that. Thank you. Mr. Bird, Mr. Rules. <clears throat> Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stemper? Yes. Sorry, right, you're on the hot seat. Can you come to the mic for a minute? <laughs> Could you speak up? I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I forgot. What I'm saying. sorry. So, <laughs> this is Jessica Hawkins. Um, she had presented um, information to me. They're going to do a fundraiser. And they have all, I'm going to let her explain it, but they have all the licensure and stuff that they need. Um, but in order to complete that, they need the blessing from the legislative branch that it's okay for them to do what they want to do. So um, I've talked to Mike. He doesn't have an issue with it, um, and he can draft up a letter or something, but I just wanted her to share it with us, and that way if anybody had any concerns or questions, they could do that. So FACES Lounge is seeking approval at uh, the city level uh, to have our parking lot shut down on May 18th with a rain date of May 19th. It's called a temporary expansion permit. Um, my dad owns a parking lot, so zoning and ordinance won't be an issue. Once it's approved at the local level by you, then I will submit pictures along with our permit and everything that's needed. So it just needs approved at the local level, and then I will send in the application to complete the process. Do you have any questions for her? This came to me after the agenda was presented, so um, that's why we're doing it kind of this way. So we're just closing down the parking lot for a period of time? For faces, um, for yes. Just for okay. one day, and if it rains on May 18th, then it'll be May 19th. We will have um, uh, construction, like barricades blocking off. They, the. Department of Commerce Liquor Control Division said that as long as it's visible to anyone that any barrier is okay in that being that my dad owns a parking lot it's like a private owner type thing so yes just for the one day is there really any reason for us to get involved or approve officially I mean Mike's already authorized <laughs> to shut down Broad Street Yes, I didn't think so, um, and because even if we approve it now, he's still going to have to write some kind of letter to state yeah. it. So I guess I just wanted everybody to be aware it needs to be, you know, approved or that from the legislative branch. So, um, you know, just to explain what was going on. Okay. So. I I just since we're under suspended rules, I just say we let Mike do his job. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank You need a motion to resume council? A motion to resume council rules. I'll second that. Ms. Stimford? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. <laughs> All right, next is the approval of the previous minutes. Oh, I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Mr. Rufner. <clears throat> Roll. Roll. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stempert? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? I'd like to abstain since I was not present for that meeting. So we need to make a motion to accept his absten abstention. I'll, I'll second it. Motion. We got a motion and a second. 
Mr. Uh, Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stemper? Yes. And Ms. Persino? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Uh, Mr. Axiotis, I imagine you would abstain from this. I didn't call your name, but should I have called your name? Not on extension. I mean, I should have voted my own thing. So. <laughs> okay. Then what if it feel left? Article 9 would be public hearing on Ordinance 2024-09, which is an ordinance authorizing the execution <clears throat> of the 2023 NPP Power Pool Participant Schedule with American Municipal Power Incorporated, otherwise known as AMP. <clears throat> Next is Ordinance 2024-10 amended, and it is an ordinance ratifying and or confirming the administrative overhead cost allocations to the Electric Revenue Fund. The Water, uh, <clears throat> the water Revenue Fund, the Sewer Revenue Fund, and the General Fund. Rick Curlin, 1009 Wood Glen. Again, I, I ask that this not be approved. I don't know about the amendment, whether you voted on it or not. There's no way you can ask the law director. He's home. You can ask the finance manager. He's not here. So I think that it's going about it the wrong way. You, you haven't properly explained what the percentages are that's going to be increased and where the money is going, except that it's going in. I think Mr. Rufner did the first time, says it's going for the other departments. But in order to get to the other apartments, are you putting it in the general fund, which you have to do? And I don't think that it's proper. And again, I will say to you, it's this whole agenda is another violation of the Open Meeting Act because there's no way we can look at what's going on. You have not included anything. You don't have any examples, exhibits, or anything else. You did a good job on it. That one meeting, you had 50 or 60. It was a good back and forth between all of you, Mr. Axiotis and the rest of you, asking questions. I thought that was important. But this tell this says nothing. Citizen can't can't talk about something he doesn't know about because it's not here. So that is a violation of the Open's Meeting Act. The Open's Meeting Act is actually involves the sunshine violations also. And again, I will reiterate, your last meeting was a violation of the Sunshine Act because it wasn't advertised anywhere. They do not accept if it was advertised in the hallway where you pay your bill. That's ridiculous. And apparently the law director doesn't think it's important to be at a meeting. Thank you. Tessa Spletzer, 220 Ashland Court. I'm here to speak specifically about this one that is <clears throat> reallocating the administrative overhead costs because it directly relates to the one that's in front of it. The rate study that was done in 2023 included upgrades for the Church Street Station that you heard the interim city manager speak about. So if you're going to be taking money from the electric department, the sewage department, which is in debt, or the water department, 
when are we going to be able to realize the Church Street Station upgrades that are absolutely necessary? That equipment, we were told last year, is over 50 years old. So I would not reallocate from the utilities. Greg Wilmer, 322 Morrison Avenue. Um, I go by two things, common sense and good versus evil. I mean, we just did this, what, two, three years, four years ago? We took money and allocated it. Well, that's not the one missing. And we're gonna do it again. I'm just a common sense hillbilly, but that don't make any sense. And we've heard nothing about it. I mean, this is coming out of the blue to me. So I think we ought to really look into this. And uh, let the people know what you're doing. It seems uh, coming in through the back door. And it's happened how many times? Just feels like here we go again. Anyone else? Uh, next is ordinance 2024-12, which is an ordinance adopting a position description for the position of Director of Finance for the Village of Newton Falls. Uh, next is Ordinance 2024-13. That is an ordinance requesting that the Village of Newton Falls seek proposals for a comprehensive forensic audit of the Village's finances for the past five years. All right, we're going to move on to number 10, unfinished business, <clears throat> ordinance 2024-09. This is an ordinance authorizing the execution of the 2023 NPP Power Pool Participant Schedule with American Municipal Power, also known as AMP. I'll make the motion to move. I'll second. Mr. Rufner. Roll. 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 Discussion. Uh, Mr. Oh, Rufner? Discussion. A... Sorry. Oh, you want discussion? In discussion? Yep. yep. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stemper? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Thanks. Five zero. <clears throat> Next, we have Ordinance 2024-10 amended. This is an ordinance ratifying and or confirming the administrative overhead cost allocations to the Electric Revenue Fund, the Water Revenue Fund, Sewer Revenue Fund, and also the General Fund. I'll make that motion. I'd like to first address. I will second. Please. Rufner, Ms. Stimper. 
Mayor, if I may? Yes, please. All right. Okay, so contrary to what's been said, this has adequately been put out there. If you go back to the meeting on the 20th, same Exhibit A you had from the 20th. The amendment is when I made the motion to remove the emergency clause. So that was your amended as amended, removing it from an emergency. So that's your amended. It's back on the floor tonight, the same Appendix A or Exhibit A as we had on the 20th. You go down the list, like I said, these departments, the city manager, the finance, council, and law, do not generate funds on their own. They cannot self-sustain. So they must be funded or provided from other areas. That's broken up through these departments, the water, water distribution, sewer, and electric. This isn't a new thing, this is done every year. The Exhibit A shows you 2022, 2023, and 2024 projected. This isn't something we just threw out there. This is something we just come up with. It's reviewed annually by the finance director with recommendations made to council for moving forward to adjust how much is taken from the, or obligated against the general fund versus utility funds. I know it's been put out there and people are in a panic. They're saying, oh my God, this is gonna raise our electric rates. It dropped by 2% on the electric. It went from 28% to 26%. So there's $6,000 not coming out of electric. So for all the, the negativity and the misinformation propaganda going out there, it's not realistic. Even if you look at the other departments, Water operations, it does increase by 4%. You want your money back, it's $4.88 per household is what it's costing to have that supported out of water ops. Water distribution, again, that one, 4% increase over current, $4.88 per household is what it adds up to. Your sewer, 4%. $7.66 per household, not per person, mm -hmm. and that's annually. That's for a year. So you're looking at, what, 15 bucks a year? This is what people are panicking over? Not to mention we're leaving $6,000 in the electric department that we were taking out in 2023. So this is not going to drive an elevated rate on these utilities. Putting it in reality, putting it in hard numbers, it's right there. So again, this is not new. This is nothing that just came out of the blue. It's done every year. This is how those four departments that are non-revenue generating are supported. There's no other way. So that's pretty much what I got. Anybody else? May I have an address? Yes. I pretty much was going to say most of what he said, but in addition to that, um, finance director did a whole presentation, I believe the first meeting in March, um, in regards to all this. Um, and then the exhibits are in this packet and we're in the previous packet as well. That's all I have. Anyone else? <clears throat> Ordinance two oh, zero. I'm sorry. Vote. Get a vote. I'll get a vote. Yep. Ms. Stimpert? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. <coughs> Pass five zero. Now we have ordinance 2024-12. This is an ordinance adopting a position description for the position of Director of Finance for the Village of Newton Falls. 
I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Ms. Benitez? Mr. Exiotis. I'm sorry? Discussion? Discussion, yes, please. Gold? Yeah. Mr. Exiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stimper? Yes. And Ms. Benitez? Yes. Passed 5 0. Ordinance 2024-13. It's an ordinance requesting that the Village of Newton Falls seek proposals for a comprehensive forensic audit of the Village's finances for the past five years. I make the motion to move that. I'll second it. Ms. Stimpert, Mr. Axiotis. Discussion? May I have an address? Please. Um, again, just to reiterate, this is just to seek or just to seek proposals. Um, we may do anything with that. We may do the five years. We may do nothing at all. Um, we may do certain areas. We may do all of them. That's something that we all need to discuss as council um, to see what that looks like. This is just to get us some figures and some ideas um, to see if that's something we do want to do. So it's it's not saying we're doing it. It's just giving us the option to look at those those details. That's all I have. Roll. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stemper? Yes. Pass 5-0. Next, we have Ordinance 2024-14. That's an ordinance requesting that the Village of Newton Falls expand the duties of the Clerk of Council to include the development of a comprehensive plan for the gathering and dissemination of public records. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Mr. Axiotis, Ms. Benitez. Oh, I guess. Discussion? Brian was first. Please. I just want to uh, address this. Um, currently, we're in a little bit of flux, I feel, in the Public Records Department um, with some turnover, and this is kind of to address the issues that we have fulfilling public records to kind of get us right-sided I think on the side of the law in terms of fulfillment and time to fulfill and and getting a procedure and a process down that actually actively addresses the concerns that folks have about public records so give everybody an idea of what we're doing here it's cool loud as beer <laughs> mayor yes I'd be addressed please uh, actually, I would like to make a motion to amend this ordinance, removing Section 2 in its entirety relating to the additional part-time position. Let me look at that. I will, I will second the amendment. Discussion on the amendment? May I be recognized? Yes. Uh, again, and I brought this up at the last meeting, uh, 
this particular ordinance, the way it's written, we're dealing with two separate appropriations specifically for personnel on the same ordinance. And I think to clean it up and do it better, you do one for the expansion of the duties, and if such point in time comes around, you want to bring in or it's necessary to have an additional part-time, then we do that separately. We shouldn't have two positions tied to the same ordinance or the same appropriations. That's my reason. And I do believe this would be a significant change to this ordinance. Would we have to basically come back to the first reading at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. That seems consistent with how things were handled. We would usually defer to the law director, but okay. things are pretty consistent. <clears throat> So roll call. Well, um, or yeah. keep going. Just for verification or clarification, if we vote to remove section two, then we can remove it or table it, remove it from the agenda and have it brought back at the next meeting for first reading, correct? I don't know the exact terminology of how that would uh, Yeah, you can um, you can vote to am amend it. And then once it's amended, you can either vote to pass it on first reading as amended. Okay. It's a fairly simple amendment and you're just removing that one section. Okay. Um, or you could make a motion to postpone to the next meeting. Okay. Roll call on the amendment. You ready to vote on the amendment? Mm -hmm. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stimper? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. So section two is removed. <laughs> Next would be to vote on it as amended. I'll make the motion to, Sorry. to vote on it as amended. Mr. Axiotis, the vote on it as amended? Second. Seconded by Ms. Benitez. Any further discussion? Roll call. Hold the roll. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Tricino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stimper? Yes. And Ms. Benitez? Yes. Pass 5 0 as amended. Right, next, we have Ordinance 2024 11. That's an ordinance authorizing certain amendments to the appropriations for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024, and authorizing the finance director to amend and to file a certificate of resources with the county auditor. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Rupner, Ms. Stimpert. Discussion? If I may? Please. Uh, since the appropriations have been a sticking point or point of confusion in the past, I uh, just wanted to kind of explain this a little better when you look at the uh, attachment that comes out with it. Uh, when you see a department, for example, you look at say utility department, we'll just call it electric. <clears throat> You've got two different categories up there. You've got a personnel, ser personal services, and you've got a uh, other operations. What those amount to, and I'm gonna break these down individually. 
So personal services, personal services are nothing more than pay and more or less fringe benefits. Now, fringe benefits specifically, and again, it's, I don't like the name myself, fringe benefits is what we are required to pay for the employees, the OPERS towards their retirement. They call it fringe benefits, but I don't like the terminology, but that's what it is. Uh, that's also the Medicare, hospitalization, workers' comp, et cetera, that certain employees get in areas depending on where they work. So when you see that top number for personal services, that is all inclusive. The amendments that are on here tonight, you will see most of them have a personal services. What this is, this is also going back and playing catch up with the administrative aspect in the finance department on the increases that were awarded at the end of last year and the beginning of this year for supervisors, crew chiefs, and including the finance department into the standard pay scale, so to say, that we just done a couple months ago, or maybe a month ago. So that's all gonna show up under the personal services. That's where you're gonna see those numbers. The other column, other, uh, other operations, that's your cost allocation like we spoke to tonight regarding the what goes from that department or section to fund the non-revenue generating. It also includes the insurance assessment that we just went through with all the various amounts that each department for liability is responsible for. Uh, capital improvements, anything that's projected for those departments, anything that's planned out is going to show up in that category. So when you look at that cost allocate, not cost allocation, the appropriations data, that's what it's actually referring to for those different categories. Uh, again, this is not spending the money, this is allocating the money. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, you look down the, the uh, appropriations data, and one's going to jump right out at you is $624,740.64 for the AMI metering project. It's not money that we had to find. It's not money we had to come up with. It's money we already had regarding the electric and the water meter project. This is the remaining labor installation charges that we need to pay out for those meters that have not yet been installed. So it was moved from the, I believe it was a 717 account where this was all kept, to this fund, the AMI metering fund, so we can expend it properly to pay for those services for the labor and installation of the meters. So, I mean, putting it out there. And each one's broken down that way, and you'll see it if you take the time and you want to look at it. The two categories, just remember, one, personal services, that's your pay, that's your benefits, that's your wages, that's your uh, miscellaneous insurance, fringe benefits. Uh, and then operations, obviously, that's what that is. That's the uh, insurance, that's your cost allocations, that's your capital improvements, everything else that comes out of that. Uh, this is an ever floating mark. Uh, if you remember a couple months ago, we went through this and I said, these are buckets. We have to keep increasing the bucket size sometimes because we have more bills or obligations against a department. Doesn't mean we're gonna spend it all. Doesn't mean it's obligated, but you can't put $624,000 into a bucket that only holds $300,000. You have to account appropriately. So if we have an expense anticipated of 624,000, we have to have an appropriations that's going to at least match or cover that. So I don't know if I confused people more or that might have helped. So I'll just let that go there. <clears throat> okay. Golden rules here. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stemper? Yes. Pass 5 0.
Finally, we have Ordinance 2024-18. This is an ordinance declaring certain vehicles and equipment obsolete, usable to the uh, obsolete, usable to the village of Newton Falls, and to be disposed of said vehicles and equipment. There's a typo. Yeah, I, I was going to say that that didn't sound right, or I'm losing my mind. It should say um, no longer. The ordinance is correct. So we're going to uh, disperse some vehicles that are no longer necessary for the uh, operations of the city. I'll make the motion to move. I'll second it. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. May I have an address? Yes. Um, I just, as I kind of counter talk there, but um, so the ordinance in our packet is correct. Um, it says obsolete and no longer usable. There's just a typo here on the agenda. Um, but if you double check the, the ordinance, it is correct. Yes. Also, I, I did get an email. Uh, someone was concerned about the funds for the disposal of this equipment. I reached out to Mr. Housley. He had specified that um, while these get sold through government deals, uh, there'll be an auction style sell. Any revenue generated from the sale of these will go back to the fund that originally paid for this equipment, just so everyone's on the same page. It doesn't go into the general fund, it goes to whatever fund that paid for the equipment initially. So. Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stempert? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Pass 5 0. <laughs> All right. Let's move into public comments. <clears throat> <clears throat> Limited to three minutes. Pamela Pretty, 3725 Halleck Silk Road, Newton Township. Um, I would like to address this to the chair, and I would like to take Mr. Rufner up on his offer about getting my money back on Ordinance uh, 2024-10. Um, until you can explain to me that I have a business, or my husband has a business in this community, that I pay for a closed business on average between $140 to $160 a month in utilities. Why am I paying that when there's no water being used, no sewer being used, and very little electricity? The furnace is turned down to 65 degrees, and the only thing that operates in there is a refrigerator. So why am I paying $140 a month to $160 a month on those utilities? No water has been ran for a month, no sewer has been used. So yes, I'd like to take you up on your offer and I want my money back until you can explain, then I don't want to pay any more money. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, closing remarks. Mayor has no closing remarks. We'll move on to our council members. Sir? I just want to say, um, I know in public comments made earlier about the law director not being at the meeting, he is on a vacation, a pre-scheduled vacation. So that's why he's not here tonight. Also into the other comments just made, um, the person who made the comments had run the city for almost two years. I think she would know why her bill was the way it was. And if she doesn't, she can reach out to the utility department for clarification as to why her bill is the way it is. I do know that um, one of my rental units, I had East Ohio gas. I didn't use an ounce of gas, had it off. I was doing remodeling. I still got a bill every month for $40. This was a standard rate. That's what they charge you, whether you used anything or not. So I'm assuming probably some of it boils down to that but Miss Julie I have nothing 
Ms. Brennan, do you have anything? Kevin, do you have anything? Nothing additional, Mayor. Is there a motion to recess into executive session tonight? No. No? All right, we'll move on to adjournment. I'll make the motion. Second. Mr. Axiotis, Ms. Benitez. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Axiotis? Yes. Ms. Persino? Yes. Mr. Rufner? Yes. Ms. Stimpert? Yes. Ms. Benitez? Yes. Pass at zero, seven o'clock. Wow. A lot of legislation in there. What's going on? Right on the